Hey folks, welcome back. What do you say when it's time to fly? I say, woo! Fly woo! This uh, it's a pretty neat little set. It comes to me, comes to me by my friends uh, at Banggood. This is by Flywoo. It uh, oh, got some stickers. For some reason, we've got uh, wet wipes. Not sure why. A little spec sheet, and check this out. Look at that. That is that is pretty, real pretty. Look at that. Four motors and an ESC. Uh, nice little set by Flywoo. Let's go ahead and take a closer look at it. Um, obviously, we get four bags of mounting hardware and prop nuts. And we have this here. This is a 4 in 1 6S BLHeli 3250 amp ESC. And the gold color, man, the, the video does it no justice. This is. This is just beautiful looking. If you uh, if you're looking for something that looks really cool, look at that. Look at the, look at the reflection off that thing. That is amazing. Just big old monster main discharge leads. Big, easy to get to solder pads. Not a lot of capacitors on there. There's some on this side and a few on here. Um, I'd have to imagine the FETs are probably underneath these pieces of aluminum. Probably act as heat sinks. Uh, I'm not going to peel those off because I don't want to damage this. Um, pretty decent board layout. And this one does use only a pin connection to go to your flight controller. There are no uh, breakout solder pads on that. So uh, keep that in mind. But this thing is... This thing is beautiful. It's got a current sensor. It doesn't have individual current sensing. At least I can't see it unless it's underneath here. So you're not going to get current sensing of each motor, but you'll get overall current sensing for the entire board. All right, let's put that aside. In this bag, we get uh, some mounting hardware, some standoffs, and there's our there's our connection cable. Uh, it's pinned at both ends, so it's intended to go to a flight controller that's compatible. Uh, one word of caution on that is double, triple, and quadruple check. <laughs> Get a friend to double check for you after you hook it up to make sure you've got this going in the right places. Don't assume that you can just plug this in and plug that in and, and it'll work. Um, you could end up frying some components if you have power and ground going to the wrong places. And a smoke stopper is not going to help you when you're trying to put uh, VBAT to one of your motor outputs on your flight controller. Trust me, been there, done that. Not cool. Uh, it does come with a low ESR capacitor. It's a Rubicon. Uh, 35 volt, 470 microfarad capacitor. Should be plenty enough to clean up the uh, voltage ripples going into that ESC. And let's take a look at these. These motors are just as beautiful as the flight controller. Sorry, just as beautiful as the ESC. They look a lot like the iFlight Zing motors. And I've heard people say that they're made by the same company. Um, although I've also heard that both companies deny that fact. Um, but the look, the style, and the feel are pretty close. Uh, for me, these ones are the 2207, the 2450 KV variant. Um, a little bit higher KV than I would like for 6S. But there are ways around that. Really, really nicely, nicely machined. Motors aren't super notchy. They are a little bit notchy. I'd say a little notchier than the iFlight Zing motors. Um, it does have a, a lip on the underside of the bell to keep the magnets from slipping. Uses a screw for uh, retaining the motor bell uh, instead of a clip, which I think uh, most manufacturers are kind of going away from the clips. Although the clips do, do make for a lighter motor, but a little bit harder to service. The windings look 
pretty good. Not the greatest. Um, yeah, really, really nice looking motors. Uh, nice thick uh, base here. I don't know if, um, I mean, this does make it a bit heavier. The motor wires are pretty darn long. They are, let's see. They are 160 millimeters long. About six inches. And let's go ahead and tear one of these apart. Uh, I believe it's going to be a two millimeter hex driver. There's definitely some Loctite on there. So if they don't come out, maybe take a soldering iron and put some heat on that bolt head to free it up. All right, yeah, so the, there's definitely thread lock around there. So that's, that's a really good sign. Yeah. All right. There's the motor and there's the bell. Uh, it does have that little, uh, that little O-ring in there like the iFlight motors. So we've got a little shim. And there's that little O-ring that allows us to just crank that screw down without having to worry about the preload. So I don't know, these are looking more and more like the same construction as the iFlight Zing motors. Now this, uh, this is a premium motor, or at least it commands a premium price. And you can get the motors individually and the ESC individually, or you can get them as a set. And you do save a couple bucks doing it that way. Nice look at the laminations. Nice big bearings here. Really, really nice construction. Really impressed. All right, let's go ahead and put that back together here. So if you've never experienced the motors with the that O-ring in there versus the ones without, you have to kind of be careful how tight you make the screw, otherwise you bind the motor up. These ones, you crank it right down and that O-ring helps set the preload. So you don't have to worry about them binding up or having to like find that sweet spot before it binds up. So that's, that's that. And uh, that's, that's it in the box. These are pretty impressive little, little motors. Uh, the 2450 KV variant, they're rated, uh, the manufacturer rates them from three to five S. They also sell a 1750, which is more of their six S and a 2750, which is more of a four S motor. Um, and with that said, you know, you may be able to get away with 6S on these. I'm definitely going to run 6S on these. Um, probably just have to take it easy on the top end and probably put a throttle in it. Uh, as it, as it is in the description as a 2207. So that relates to the stator size. Um, it's a five mil shaft and these are a 16 by 16 mounting pattern. Pretty pretty standard. Um, really, really well constructed. Uh, the, uh, the ESC again, 50 amp is the constant current. This is right up to a 60 amp peak, 60 amps. It's crazy. 60 amps on six S is a ton of power. And of course has telemetry and a current meter, uh, supports D shot 150, 300, 600 and D shot 1200. Um, I don't really know if anybody's using D shot 1200. Uh, if you are, put it in the, uh, let me know if you feel any uh, difference. Let me know in the description. Um, kind of curious. Um, but yeah, that's it. This is this is going to be a pretty nice little set. I just have to uh, wear it up to one of my quads and go give it a rip. But anyways, I from initial uh, just looking at them initially, I. I'd recommend these. These are pretty nice looking motors. And if they're built anything like the iFlight motors, I put those things through hell and back. I mean, I'm using them on my race quad and I suck at racing. I crash a lot and I still haven't. I've scuffed a motor and that is really about it. Uh, motors have, are definitely coming a long way as far as their reliability and durability goes. Uh, I've seen plenty of people buying the economy brand motors. Um, 
you can insert whatever manufacturer you want there. But the common thread I see with all those is you crash really good, they fail. Yeah, they're 10 bucks a piece, but you may replace three or four of them before you would replace a premium motor that commands a 20, 20 plus dollar uh, price point. But each person's got their own situation, so you got to kind of weigh out what you want and what you're willing to spend. But in general, I've noticed that people who, uh, everything being equal, if they're flying a economy motor versus a premium motor, the economy motors typically fail way quicker than the premium ones. But uh, that's just my experience. That's just what I see. Um, and in my personal experience, the cheaper motors like the Sam Gooks and the, uh, the Emax Eco motors definitely can't stand up to the same amount of abuse as a more high-end motor and uh it you know i know some of that's driven by just just price point and some of it has to do with components bigger bearings uh heavier duty shafts different materials tighter tolerances thicker bases you know there's there's a lot of different things out there so be real careful about what you buy um in this hobby sometimes you do get what you pay for and if all you can afford is the the cheap stuff then hey whatever it takes to get you in the air go for it um, there's nothing wrong with it but anyways, uh, so this was, again, sent to me by my friends at Banggood. I really appreciate everything they're doing for me in this channel. Uh, if you wouldn't mind, uh, if you enjoy what I'm doing here, please like, subscribe, comment below. How, have you tried these? How, how do you feel about them? How do you feel about this ESC? This looks, uh, this looks a whole lot like a dollar C ESC if I've ever seen one. Um, I have a Patreon. If you're uh, really into, if you really want to support me, go, go check that out. And I also have a Discord where we can uh, we can have a little bit better discussion. If you're troubleshooting or having any issues, or you just wanna just wanna shoot the shit, go over to Discord. Uh, YouTube is a the YouTube comments are kind of a terrible place to try to do troubleshooting with people, just because it's it's so limited and conversations get lost very easily in there. So head on over to my Discord. Check out the links in the description. Uh, if you're curious about this, or if you want to check it out, go ahead and click down there. Anyways, thanks a lot. Thanks for your time. I really hope you enjoyed this, and I, uh, I, I'm gonna, I'm gonna go out on a limb here and say these are gonna be really good motors in ESC, but uh, time will tell. All right, guys. I'll see you next time.